Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the MedAI Group Exchange Sessions. Today, we have um, Fuying Wong um, here with us to speak about his research on uh, multi-granularity uh, cross-modal alignment for medical visual, uh, visual representation learning. Um, Fuying is actually a second year PhD student in the Department of Statistics and Actuarial Sciences at the University of Hong Kong, and he's supervised by Lequan uh, Yu. Um, prior to this, he received his um, bachelor's degree from the Tsinghua University, and his research interests span the uh, area of multimodal learning, self-supervised learning, and interpretable AI. Um, in particular, he's currently working on multimodal biomedical data analysis, self-supervised medical representation learning, and interpretable machine learning for healthcare. Um, thanks so much, Fuing, for joining us today. And I guess before we get started, do you have preferences on when you'd like to take questions? Uh, is it at the end, or could we feel free to interrupt you? Which do you prefer? Oh uh, yeah, uh, I think I'm I'm happy to answer the question at any time during the talk. So you can please feel free to interact interrupt me and uh, ask your question. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks so much, Fuing, again uh, for joining us today and. Without further ado, let me hand it over to him. Okay, yeah. Uh, thanks so much for the invitation. Um, I'm very excited to um, have this opportunity to share our recent work, which was published in the New Rips 2022. And its title is Multi-Granularity Course Model Alignment for Generalized Medical Visual Representation Learning. Um, and during this project, I'm very fortunate to work with our um, outstanding co-authors um, Yu Ying Zhou and Shu Jun Wang, Marut, and my supervisor Lo Quan Yu. Okay. Um, so, firstly, uh, let's review this uh, very common question in the medical image domain. So, it's called the chest X ray classification. And uh, this figure shows a typical pipeline of this problem. So, I guess we have been familiar with this. And um, typically, we can fit the chest X-ray images as the input into this machine learning model. So here we use a convolutional neural network. And this CNN will output a probability distribution over the classes. And additionally, we will also have the ground truth labels, so which in this case, which means the positive or negative. Um, so um, we can supervise the train this machine learning model by optimizing some, um, for example, the cross entropy loss. Um, so in this case, this is a pipeline of the supervised chest X-ray classification. However, uh, we notice like the, uh, this pipeline might have uh, need diverse or large number of labeled training data to train this machine learning model. Especially in the medical image domain, um, we found like collecting such large data set requires intensive human labor and time. So. Um, recently, it has become a bottleneck of the supervised uh, chest X-ray classification problem. Um, at the same time, so we notice like the medical data are, is often multimodal. So this means, except for the medical images, um, the radiology reports are also very common during the doctor's routine care. So this figure shows an example of a medical image report pair. So we can see like during the, so the radiologists often write some brief text. So we can see in this figure, it will summarize the underlying medical condition or the reason for the examination of the prior imaging studies performed. So to conclude, so we can see the radiology reports typically um, provide some descriptive clinical findings. So we think this information is very uh, important for the machine learning models. And also the, uh, currently like more and more researchers have been interested in studying like how to utilize this rich information in the radiology reports and uh, use them to help the development of healthcare, healthcare AI systems. So to analyze the unstructured uh, EHR data, so the, um, this data means the free text, uh, the radiology reports or medical reports. Typically, people use the neural NLP methods to um, study this field. And so we can see the left figure just summarize uh, like the uh, mainstream research topics in this field. 
We, um, for example, we can conclude some research topics like the classification or the embedding or the extraction generation or other topics. Uh, in this slide, we just show an example like this is a multimodal system. So it can use the medical text and also some tabular data from the medical notes as the input to predict the uh, ICD code of this patient. So typically, uh, this task belongs to the medical outcome prediction task. So it, it shows us like the unstructured EHR data, or you can see like the free text data can help the um, machine learning system to find some important findings or get some important uh, outcome prediction. So here we have another example, like uh, we can also use a clinical board to text the radiology report. So here is radiology report and also some medical notes as the input to predict the probability of the readmission of this patient with, within a, a 30 days um, time window. So um, in this task, we use the board to get the embeddings of these radiology reports. Um, and it also, um, it also shows like the EHR data or um, the free text uh, radiology reports can be used as an important information to do some um, medical decision. So here we might show um, another example is we can, use, we can fine tune a pre-trained board model to some several question answering tasks. So here we just show two examples, like the left part shows we can use this model to um, implement a quarrel question uh, similarity task. So this means we can compute the similarity between these two questions by this by fine tuning this board model. Um, the right part shows another example, like we might use uh, we might use this board model and fine tune it to and implement some question answering task. Okay, so, so here we can conclude like the recently more and more research, uh, more and more research has been um, conducted in this field. So can we can use the unstructured EHR data to um, achieve some medical tasks. But here we are interested in like, can we utilize this unstructured EHR data in our, and to learn some better visual representations. Mm, yes, and the answer is yes, because so recently we can see like more and more researchers trying to solve the uh, challenge of insufficient annotated data by exploiting the supervision from the radiology reports. And this idea is inspired by the fact like the um, paired radiology reports typically contain some important information about the medical condition and the disease. And uh, this information, like it's very um, fine grained and informative. So um, people can design some machine learning systems to utilize this information. Okay, so here we introduced like there are two common approaches to um, exploit the supervision from the reports. The first category of approach is called to, we can extract the labels from the reports by some NLP rules. So uh, the pipeline can be seen in this figure. Like um, for example, we can have the image text pair like these two. And by design some NLP rules, so we can uh, extract the label of this disease. Like we can uh, use the radiology report as the input and we can output the label. So um, after this, we can get this uh, something like an annotated data set. So we can supervise the train the image encoder as we have shown in the first slide. However, we find that there are two um, drawbacks of this method. The first one is these labels are typically noisy because the NLP rules are sometimes they are not accurate enough. So this means our annotation is not also accurate enough. So uh, if we use this annotated data to train the image encoder, so this means um, like we can have a suboptimal result. Another thing is the detailed descriptions of the reports are often disregarded during the label extraction. And uh, however, we believe like the fine grain information or the detailed description 
which is uh, very important in the medical tasks. So, um, but this this kind of method doesn't fully expo exploit the information um, in this part. And the second kind of second category of approach is called the image te image text joint representation learning. So this kind of approach um, is very popular in recently uh, in recent fields. And uh, so we think uh, uh, advantage of this method is it we don't need to manually annotate the chest X-ray images. Um, typically, the key idea of this kind of approach is we can use some self-supervised learning method to uh, jointly train this image, image encoder and text encoder, and then we can get the um, good representations for the downstream tasks. So here, this figure shows a, a representative method of this field, so it's called convert. So um, typically, its idea is also very uh, like um, simple, but like it's very um, effective. If we um, take the medical image and report pair as the input, and we can we can have the enco image encoder and the text encoder to extract the features. Like here we have V and U, so here V is the embedding for the image, and U is the embedding for the text. And then we can we can use some constructive learning method. So this can will be introduced later, but basically. Um, so we can see the constructive learning means we can uh, uh, we can pull the embeddings of the true image text pairs clause, and while we can push the embeddings of the random or the other image text pairs far away. So in this case, we can um, learn a good representation by this image encoder. Okay, so after this pre-training we can fine tune this pre-trained image encoder for several downstream tasks like the classification or the object detection or the semantic segmentation. Um, so especially in this project, we are focused on the uh, this, this category of method. So it's called the image text joint representation learning. And also uh, we have, uh, like we have, uh, and also recently, there are more and more researchers have been um, conducted in this field. So typically, um, these are two representative related work. So they are focusing on um, designing some architectures to better learn the real representations. So the left, the left one shows the framework of Gloria. So this has been published like the uh, maybe two years ago. So. Um, this framework utilizes the global representation. So this means they, we firstly have a global um, correspondence between the image text pairs. And then we can have a local correspondence between the image and the text pairs. And this global and local representation and correspondence can help the image encoder to learn more, to learn better visual representations. And this um, paper also shows like the um, local representation or local correspondence is significantly important in several medical downstream tasks. And so the right one shows like the framework of refers. And in this paper, they propose these two um, pre-training tasks. The first one is the contrastive image text representation learning. And then the second one is we can um, generate the medical report from the radiology gra radio radiographs. And additionally, this paper also proposed a radiograph transformer. So this, this is a multi-view radiograph transformer. So it can better extract the representations from the chest X-ray images. And finally, uh, this paper shows like these two pre-training tasks, tasks are both helpful for the, uh, to learn the generalized medical visual representations. Okay. And um, these two are like, we, we only show two representative related work. Basically there are a lot of related work in this field, but um, after our um, literature review, we can conclude like the existing methods and um, they typically utilize the insufficient supervision from the image text pairs. 
So in this project, in this project, we are aiming at to um, fully exploiting the supervision from the radiology reports and to learn more generalized visual representations. So, um, so our motivation can be shown in this figure. Um, typically, uh, we can see like uh, we we observed that there exists a multi granularity correspondence in the uh, image text pair data set. So from the low level to the high level, we conclude them as the pathological region level and the instance level and the disease level. So um, from the uh, so this is the like the lowest level. So we can see. Um, typically, the pathological region only occupies the, a small portion of this medical image, and we observed like the this pathological region only corresponds to some meaningful words in these radiology reports. So this means we might only have several words to which describes the medical condition or medical disease, and uh, uh, this region should be corresponded to these several words. If we go to um, a higher level, so this means the instance level. So this means for the paired image and text, we assume they should have the same semantic meaning in the embedding space. And this is also, uh, this has been utilized by previous work. Um, another thing we notice might be uh, like maybe in this data set, several radiology reports or several medical images they might have the similar medical condition or the similar disease. So this means uh, their high level semantic information is close. So we hope the, uh, their representations should also be close. So for example, here the yellow group shows uh, several, say several image text pairs. They, they should have the same disease and the yellow shows another. So typically we hope um, all the embeddings in this group should be close. So here we can conclude like the motivation of this project. So um, we observed like the image text pairs naturally um, exhibit the three levels semantic correspondence. So this means the pathological region level and the instance level and the disease levels from, high, from low level to high level. Um, and we think the previous work might uh, utilize the insufficient supervision from the reports. So here our goal is to um, design a framework to fully utilize these three level semantic correspondence to um, better learn the real representations. Okay. So uh, the next one, so we can show the, um, Firstly, we can show the overview of our framework. So this framework is called multi-granularity cross model. So it can be abbreviated as the MGCA. Um, so to, um, to learn the uh, real, um, cross model correspondence from three levels. So we design three modules here. So here we can see the first module CTA. So this is called a cross attention based token wise alignment. So this is used to utilize the token level or the pathological region level correspondence. So here, another module is called ITA. So this module is used to uh, learn the cross-model instance-wise correspondence. And the next level, CPA, so this is the cross-model prototype alignment module. So this can be used to learn the uh, disease level correspondence. And, and then we can look at the um, data flow. So typically the input is the chest x-ray image and the radiology reports. Um, here we will have an image encoder to um, get the global representation of this image. And also we can have, uh, we can also get the local representations. So the um, here, how to get the local representation depends on the architecture of our image encoder. So we can use the vision transformer so in this case, this local representation can be the embedding of each patch. And also we might also use the um, CNN as the image encoder. So in this case, we might also use the feature map of this uh, CNN as the local representations. And for the text encoder, 
Similarly, so we can also have the global representation. So this means the report representation. And also we can have the local representation ZI here. So um, because the text encoder it basically is a word model, so we can get the local representation by like the word embedding. So uh, yeah, so uh, I will introduce the techniques of these three modules uh, in the following slides. But basically here we can conclude again. So uh, typically our framework is to exploit the multi-granularity image text alignment. So this means the token-wise alignment and the instance-wise alignment and the proto prototype-wise alignment to uh, for the visual representation learning. Okay. So here I might introduce the uh, instance-wise image text alignment module first. So its key idea is we can use the contrastive learning to pull the true image text pairs close in the latent space, while we can push in the image um, other image text pairs far away in this latent space. So uh, this by uh, this pre-training, so we uh, we think we can maximize the mutual information between the true image text pairs, and this pre-training can give um, can make the image encoder lens meaningful representations. Um, so firstly, we can review like uh, here's the, we have used the image encoder to get the image representation VI. So we can see the, we can go over the figure like the VI is here and the TI is the report representation. Okay, so, uh, so here we can use the, we can compute the similarity of the ice image text pairs by this formula. So here, uh, since these two uh, VI tutor and TI tutor are normalized vectors, so we can directly use the dot product to get its cosine similarity. Mm, so um, in this case, we can utilize two symmetric temperature normalized info NCE laws to um, achieve our goal. So which means to achieve this, sorry, to achieve this instance-wise contrastive learning. Uh, so notice that here we have two parts. Basically, the V2T means we can use the image, uh, image representation to find the correct report representation. And here, the next part is T2V. So here, this means we can use the report representation to find the correct image representation. Um, so our overall objective function is the average of these two functions. Um, and also this is shown for uh, each instance. So here we can compute the average value of the of this loss function over batch size. So it gets um, so here this is the formula of the ITA loss. Okay, so this is uh, the next part we might introduce our second and uh, the um, cross attention based token wise alignment module. So it can be abbreviated as the CTA module. Uh, this module can be used to explicitly align the local representations between the medical images and the medical reports. Um, so here we might firstly review some notations. So uh, for the VRO token embedding, so this means we can use the image encoder to get the local, in, uh, local representations. So here we write it as uh, R tutor IJ. So I means the uh, um, ice, uh, the ice uh, image text pair, and the J means the J0 token of this image. Okay, and here we can use the Z tutor IK. So this can be uh, this, this this is this is used to represent the um, text token embedding. So this means we can so this can be represented as the uh, J report and the K word token. So here we can compute the corresponding cross-model text embedding of this viral token embedding by this formula. Um, typically, this is a cross-attention cross operation. So we can firstly look at the left and the right part. So this is a uh, attention weight. So this means we can use the R tutor IJ as the query, and we can use the Z IK and Z tutor IK as the 
on key. So this means we use this virtual token embedding and to compute its weight with um, other to test token embeddings and get this weight called FIJ2K. And then we can use this weight to compute the weighted sum of the uh, of the text token embeddings to get the OIJ. So, uh, so here we might think like the OIJ is typically it should have the same semantic meaning with the R tilde IJ, but basically it's like we represent the R tilde IJ with the text token embedding or with another modality data. So intuitively we can think the R tilde IJ should be close to the OIJ in the embedding space. And this is uh, uh, a key point of our following uh, design. Yeah. So here, uh, the o QK and VO are for learnable metrics. So this is uh, similar to the transformer architecture. Okay. Um, another thing we need to mention is uh, we also consider like the different viral tokens might have variance importance. So this means um, for the medical image, we might, think, we might uh, see like there are a lot of backgrounds. So uh, this background should have less importance and some uh, regions which represent the uh, pathology should have the higher importance. So here we design a WIJ. So this is a weight for the S0 token. Um, so here is, so for the virion transformer, we can get this weight by um, obtaining the last layer attention weight from the JS viral token to the class token. So it can be averaged across the multiple heads because the uh, uh, virion transformer has multi-head um, attention. So um, finally, we can define this local image to text alignment loss to pause the RI tilde J. So this means the real token embedding here. And we can pull it close to its corresponding cross-model text embedding OIJ. So as we said, uh, OIJ is like, um, like we can represent this R tilde IJ by the text token embeddings. So intuitively, we might think these two embedding should be close in the latent space. And also we can push the R tilde IJ away from the other cross-model text embeddings. So, which means this loss is like a cross um, contrastive loss format. And uh, so we can see this formula. Typically, it also has two parts. Uh, the left part is also means uh, we can use the R tilde IJ to find the correct OIJ. And the right part means um, in reverse, we can use OIJ to find the correct R tilde IJ. Um, so we can notice here we have a weight. So this can be used to um, used to uh, like represent the importance of different viral tokens. Okay, and then uh, we can average this term over the batch size and over the number of viral tokens to get the loss image to text alignment loss. Okay, so. Similarly, so we can see um, in the last slide, we have discussed the viral token embedding. So here we can also discuss for the text token embedding Z to the IG. We can also um, compute its cross model Im um, image embedding all head IG. So this uh, procedure should be close to the last slide. And also we can construct a local text to image alignment loss by contrasting the Z to the IJ and the O hat IJ. Okay, so um, here we can conclude our final objective of the CTA module is given by the average of the LTA loss and LIA loss. Okay. So uh, the last module is called the cross model prototype alignment module. It's abbreviated as the CPA. So this module is used to align the high-level semantic information between the medical image and text. Um, so as the first step, we can predefine the key trainable um, cross-model prototypes. So this means we can predefine key vectors. 
here the k is uh, a hyperparameter, so it represents the number of clusters. And uh, uh, the cross, these prototypes are called cross-model prototypes because they are shared in different modalities. So uh, the next step is for each image text embedding pair. So uh, we have get this from the image encoder and text encoder. We can employ the iterative single um, knob clustering algorithm. So to acquire two soft, soft cluster assignment codes. So here the soft cluster assignment codes means uh, we can uh, like assign these two vectors to all cross-model prototypes and get its um, like uh, assign. So here, um, so here we um, here one thing is important is we we have the soft assignment code. Um, so another the next step is we can also can calculate the zero soft max probability and the text soft max probability as this formula. So um, here we can see the CK means. We can find the cluster, uh, the cluster prototype of this VI tutor. So this, C and then we can compute the softmax probability by this formula. So the key pyramid, uh, So here, the uh, here shows the uh, summation of all other prototypes, all, all prototypes. And also the uh, red part shows we can compute the text softmax probability, and CK means the. Uh, uh, close the prototype of the TI tutor. So intuitively, we think the Q, QVI, so QVI means we can compute the assignment code by this clustering algorithm. And also we can compute the uh, softmax probability. And we, we intuitively, we think the P and Q should, should be consistent in different modality. So this uh, motivates us to design this um, CPA loss. So basically, it's an average of the two cross model prediction loss. So we can see uh, for this part, we want to use the PV to predict the QT. And in the next part, we want to use the PT to predict the QV. So basically, um, this means we hope the cluster assignment code should be consistent in different modality. Okay, so this means we can use the uh, visual softmax probability to predict the assignment code of the text embedding. Now here is to use the text softmax probability to predict the viral token embedding. So finally, our objective is um, the average of these two laws, and here n is the batch size. So um, to conclude, we think the by design this CPA module, we can achieve the high level cross model correspondence. And this, um, this module can help the image encoder to learn the high-level semantic information, so which, which is important for the downstream tasks. Okay. So the next one is the, our final objective. So since we have three modules to learn the three-level correspondence, uh, so finally, we will train our framework with jointly optimizing these three modules. Uh, so here, the lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three are three hyperparameters, and we can choose them by some empirical experimental results. Uh, so next, we can show the pre-training setup of this framework. Firstly, uh, for the data set, so we use the JPEG version of the Mimic CXR data set to pre-train our framework. Um, so after the pre-processing, so this data set contains about um, 217,000 image text pairs for pre-training. And for the backbone, so we use the bioclinical BERT as the initialization of the text encoder. And we choose the vision transformer um, base version as the image encoder. But basically, we can also use the uh, uh, ResNet50 as the image encoder. And for the training details, so uh, we train our framework 50 epochs on two uh, G GPUs and with a batch size of 144. Um, so here we use a uh, early stop if the valid val um, validation loss doesn't decrease after the five straight runs. And here for reference, the pre-training takes about uh, one day to finish. 
Okay, so here um, I want to show some uh, experimental results of this framework. So firstly, this is a linear classification uh, experiment. So uh, we show our experimental results on the Chexpert and SNA and the COVID-X data set. And so here we use the 1%, 10%, and 100% training data to show the uh, linear probe performance. Here's the uh, metric is uh, a AUC score. So we can see uh, because the previous methods have used a different uh, pre-training data set, so we can classify them into two groups. Um, so this part is they can pre-train on they 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 were pre-trained on the chessboard data set. And this part they will pre-train on the uh, mimic CSR data set. And uh, uh, so uh, according to these experimental results, we think the uh, our framework with the variant transformer backbone has achieved the best performance uh, over the um, all settings in this linear classification problem. And uh, so we also uh, evaluate the dense prediction performance of our framework and compare it with previous method. So firstly, we test, uh, we evaluate the object detection performance on the ISNA and object CSR data set. And this, each data set is fine-tuned with the 1%, 10%, and 100% training data. So this is similar to the classification problem. So we can see our uh, our method can also achieve the best dense prediction performance in compared with the previous method. And um and also another is the semantic segmentation task. And uh, here we test the SIM and the SNA data set. So here we use the dice score as the perform um, as the metric. Yeah. So um. Uh, Especially in this task, we show like so with 1% training data, our method can um, achieve the best performance. So this shows like the data efficient of our framework. Okay. So the next part is we want to show the ablation study of the different modules. So here we show the Ablation study of our framework on the linear classification task. So here we show two data sets, uh, Chessbird and the ISNA, and also the semantic segmentation settings. So here it shows the SIM data set. Uh, so here we, uh, following the previous experiments, we report the AUC and the dice score for these two tasks. Um, so here we have two observations in um, by these experiments. Firstly, we think the CTA and CPA, so this means uh, uh, cross-attention-based token-wise alignment and the cross-model prototype alignment. These two modules both improve the performance of our downstream tasks. Uh, and another observation is if we train these three modules jointly, so this is the last row, we can show like it it achieves the best performance over the uh, these two downstream tasks. So it also shows like um, our multi granularity uh, alignment is can help the downstream tasks. Okay. So another experiment is we compare our method with the natural vision language pre training method. So here. Uh, we compare our framework with the uh, BLIP. So this is the state-of-the-art natural vision language pre-training model. And the results can be shown in this figure. So here we show the linear classification um, performance. Uh, our observation is our model can outperform the BLIP by a large margin. So this means this shows like the, in the medical tasks, the domain-specific training pre-training is very necessary. Okay, and then uh, finally, we can show some visualization results of our framework. So the left part shows the visualization of the land token token correspondence by our uh, framework. So highlight and the highlighted pixels represent the higher activation weights by the corresponding words. 
So according to this figure, we observed like the MGCA can learn some meaningful lo local correspondence between the real tokens and the text tokens. And the red figure shows the Disney realization of the encoded image representations. And here the color um, for the left sub figure, the color shows the ground truth of the disease. And the, for the red figure, we use the cluster assignment to uh, represent the color of the points. According to this figure, we can see like the um, we observed like our multimodal prototypes can learn some reasonable disease level semantic information. So this can help the uh, model to um, for the downstream tasks. Okay. So here we might show some uh, important points of this project. So firstly, we observed like the fine grain information is more significant in the medical tasks than the uh, natural image or natural language tasks. So this uh, so this means we have to uh, pay more attention on the local information or on the local correspondence. And another observation is according to our uh, experiments. So we find like the high level semantic information, this means the disease or the medical condition in the pre-training is significantly, can significantly best benefit the downstream tasks. And the third one is uh, uh, motivation or the most, uh, most important observation of this project is we find like the medical image report pairs. So they naturally exhibit the multi-granularity semantic correspondence at different levels. Um, and this information can be utilized as uh, supervision to to do self pre um, to do the pre training. So the lastly is our uh, can be a summary of this project. So we propose this multi granularity cross model alignment framework to learn the better real representations. Okay. So lastly, we might talk about several uh, future work of this project. Um, so firstly is. Uh, like the one potential direction of this project is we can explore how to leverage this multi-granularity correspondence in a holistic manner. So because uh, in this project, we have designed three separate modules to, uh, to achieve the cross-model correspondence respectively. But uh, we think a more reasonable way might be we can, um, we can like design these three levels in a, uh, like in a whole framework, so which, which means we don't need to, we only have a one module to utilize this three level correspondence. Um, the second one is we want also to uh, extend our framework as the integration of the discrimination based and the generation based method. Um, because in this framework, we all and uh, we all explore how to utilize the discrimination based self supervised learning method to. Um, achieve this pre-training task. But basically, uh, we find like more and more research has been focused on the generation-based um, method. So this means, and uh, we think this part, this method is also important in the medical task. So uh, this is a potential direction of our future work. Another thing is like the, we want to extend this framework on the multi-site setting. So this means, uh, in the medical data set, we typically, because the data are, mm, are like are limited, so uh, we want to collect data from the multi sites or from the multi hospitals to have a large data set. But basically, this data set might have some domain gap, so it will like uh, harm the performance of the pre training framework. So another direction is we want to explore how to utilize or how to uh, design this pre-training framework on the multi-site data set. Um, and lastly is uh, another thing we want to explore might be uh, since in this uh, in this project, we only utilize like how to uh, utilize the, um, which means that we can review the each image as a sample, but basically in this data set, we might have some information like the study of the patient. So if we view the patient as a, 
as a sample. So this means we can get the progression information of the disease from this patient data. So we think this information might also improve the pre-training framework in the future. Yeah. Yeah, so I think this uh, this is today's uh, talk and I'm, I'm happy to answer the questions from audience. Okay, thank you so much, Fuying, for the presentation. Uh, it's a very interesting work. Um, before we open the floor for questions, let's all give Fuying a round of virtual applause. And is there any question from the audience? Um, I have one. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, the framework that you have shown, a uh, complete framework, in that there are two encoders, right? Uh, one is image and text encoder, and another is like one is image and another is text encoder. So uh, I was thinking whether these uh, encoders are kind of uh, already trained and uh, th those are frozen, or uh, the uh, when when we are and or when we are learning all three modules, uh, all uh, are these encoders as well? They are trained or they are frozen? Uh, yeah, they are trained. So basically. Uh... Like we have, we have this framework is trained like jointly with these three modules. We don't freeze the encoder during the pre-training stage. Okay, so um, so uh, the pre-training which is uh, happening for the uh, to learn the embedding, so that is uh, uh like initially done, and then uh, this uh, uh, uh cross-model alignment is being learned, right? Uh. Yes, so firstly, we can, like, for example, randomly initialize these two encoder, and then we have the pre training data set and the uh, learning objective. So we can keep optimizing these two encoder. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a question about the prototype. So I wonder if you have looked at. Um... Yeah. Uh, you have a teasing plot, but do you um yeah, could you like do you do you actually oh. look at the correspondence between the prototypes and uh, the actual disease and also like uh, how how would you interpret this? Video? Okay, yeah, you mean this figure. So yeah. for the left part, basically, uh, so we can see uh, the same color of the points might have the same disease. So this means uh, this part might have the same disease. Uh, so for our figure, so we use the assignment, a cluster assignment to represent the color. So this means for the for the points with the same color, our model might predict them as the same disease type. Um, so here we can, so uh, it's like the, so for example, we can look at the, this part, right? So basically uh, it's like a, Rough observation, like if the we just check if the points with same color in the left part should be also have the same color in the right part or something like this. So we can observe several um, groups of the points. So basically, they should be correspondent, consistent between the left figure and the right figure. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's clear. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I guess, yeah, there, there are some correspondings here. Um, and another question I have is, um, would, could this method be extended for, uh, instead of the like, reports, could it be used for like structured EHR data? And how, how would um, that if, yeah. For, for the structured uh, EHR data, I think, uh, Mm. it might be like uh, I think it might be hard to extend the, this framework to because uh, so if we look at the framework typically thing, first the thing is if for the structured EHR data typically they are like the tabular data so um, for the basically the performance of using the deep learning based method is like limited and secondly, like uh, here we have two encoders, so I'm not sure if these two encoders are unbalanced. So this means this this part the information density might be like very low because it's 
like some tabular data. And this part is like some high dimensional image data. So uh, if we have these two imbalanced encoder, I'm not sure if the contra contrastive learning can work. And also for the token level, I think it's, uh, yeah, it might be hard to design like the local correspondence. Mm, but basically I think the mm, whole framework is based on we can, and um, firstly, utilize the instance level correspondence to uh, to um, maximize the mutual information between these two pairs. And then we can design more modules to utilize more um, correspondence. So uh, for, yeah, again, so for the structured EHR data, so I'm not sure if this contractive part can, can work. I guess it might be hard. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I see. I see. Thank you. Um, yeah, is there any you. other questions from the audience? Have you looked at the failure cases to uh, understand why the model didn't work? Oh, uh, mm, basically, we are. Mm, so typically, we show some. Um, firstly, uh, first thing is the evaluation of this method is like we, we just uh, fine tune this pre-trained model on the downstream tasks. So uh, if we check the failure case of the downstream tasks, tasks so it, uh, it might be hard to say like the, it's a problem with the pre-training model or the, some other, other thing. So um, in our experiment, we don't check the, we don't have such check. Uh, yeah, but I think it's, uh, I'm not sure how to how to change. Did you look? That. Yeah, what I'm interested. Did you look at what? Is there any pattern in the kinds of cases that the model got wrong? Uh, sorry. So, which pattern? Like you, you mean like? If you look pattern? at the cases, the ones that were incorrect. Okay. So, oh, you 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 mean like for the downstream tasks? I might like yeah. see some cases. Right. Mm. Uh, yeah, as uh, we, we don't do this in our experiments, so okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I will check this maybe later. Yeah, I think it's very interesting. It would be interesting to know if there's any, you know, the particular kinds of cases where it got the, the classification wrong. Oh, I see, I see, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I will check this later, maybe. Any other questions? If not, let's thank Fuying again uh, for the presentation and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we will upload the video to our YouTube channel later and um, hope to see you next week. Next week we'll be back to the normal timing uh, 1 to 2 p.m. PST. Thank you everyone. Thank you.